Promotion, our main event, super lightweight, undefeated Nestor Bravo, Puerto Rico. He takes on Mexico's Jair Valtierra, 16 and 2, and he has upset minded attitude. Back here, ringside, Beth and Rand, alongside Polly Malinaji and Claudia Trejos as we get ready for our main event. Let's go to our ring announcer, Mark Frado. Main event time here in Orlando. Let's bring the challenger out to the blue corner first. Please welcome up Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico. Jair Kaiser Valtierra. Tierra de las Momias, Guanajuato. Is where Yair Valtierra is from. Denilson Yair Valtierra Palomares, the 21 year old, comes in with an attitude of I need to upset. His last fight was against Raymond Murtai, who's trained by Robert Garcia. That was a good battle last July. Coming to Mexico Lindo y Querido. First time fighting in. Florida, second time in the United States. Puts his hand up. Now, one person is cheering for him because they're all here for his opponent. So Mark Randall's ready to bring in right now. And now let's meet the defending champion undefeated from Orlando, Nestor Elmas Bravo. Like I said, everybody here for Nestor Bravo, he brings the crowd, and he also has that undefeated record. 21-0. Enjoying the walk. Knows that he's one of the better Puerto Rican fighters out there. Alessivo Puerto Rico, he was born, coming up a seventh round stoppage in San Juan last October, and he's got the cover of the Pittsburgh Pirates, his last fight for the Coliseo for Roberto Clemente. Let's look at the tail of the tape for our main event tonight here in Orlando, Florida. What do you see, Polly? Well, we got a young Javier Valquera, 21 years old. He's going to try to knock off Nestor Bravo, who's 29 years old, and has to make his move now, as we talked about at the top of the show. Uh, similar reach, uh, Valquera half inch reach advantage, but uh, uh, Bravo weighed in at the limit, 140 pounds, while Valquera was a little lighter at 139.3. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the center of the ring here at Kareem Royale, Orlando. This is Night of Champions 2 on CBS Sports. Our main event of the evening is scheduled for 10 rounds and will be contested for the WBO NABO Super Lightweight Championship. It's brought to you by Box Lab Promotions in association with All Star Boxing and is presented by Kareem Royale, Orlando. Embrace the moment, live a royale. ISI security you can trust. Hialeah Park, South Florida's favorite casino. Fast Respond Restoration, Florida's premier damage restoration service for commercial and residential. And rival boxing gear, a global leader. The main event is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, the president, Francisco Paco Valcarcel. Joining us in the ring is the supervisor, Joe Hernandez. The mountain is also sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission, the chairman, Tina Pike. The executive director, Patrick Cunningham. The judges scoring this championship contest are David DeYoung, Efren LeBron, and Alexander Levin. And controlling the action when the bell sounds, the referee in charge is Frank Santori Jr. And now, live from Orlando, Florida, 10 rounds of the WBO and ABO 
Grand Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, it's go time! Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 139 and one quarter pounds. As a professional, his impressive record stands with 16 victories against two defeats, eight wins coming my way of knockout. He hails from Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico. Please welcome the former WBC Latino lightweight champion, Jair Kaiser of the Era. The champion fights out of the red corner. He weighed in at an even 140 pounds. He is undefeated as a professional. 21 bouts, 21 victories. 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He wears white with yellow and hails from Orlando, Florida by way of Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Please look at the rating, defending WBO and NBO champion, Nestor Elmas Bravo! Bravo! for both where they're supposed to be, keep your clothes here or above. Questions, questions, good luck, fellas. You can feel the energy level go up inside the hotel. Bali, our main event time. This is what Nestor Bravo wants. He wants the action, he wants to be the main guy. He's undefeated. What does he have to do tonight to show up? Well, you know, you're impressive against a guy like this. So, uh, Deanna coming in 16 and 2. He's not going to just hand it to you. But if you, it's not just about getting the win at this level. It's also about impressing and getting a quality win so that, again, you can get the attention of the big stars in the, in the division. Because at 21 and 0, you can fall into one of those big fights if you look right. Uh, Victor tonight can get him into the rankings. Talked with him briefly. He said, I know that I'm a fighter that. Um, I know I'm a guy that um, high risk, low reward, so I gotta go and get into the rankings in, in order to get the big guys into the ring. Yeah, they're coming out swinging right away. Kaiser is the nickname for Valtierra. Mas Bravo. He has a style that's very fan friendly. He comes to the press. Slip in there, kind of right hand, but slip on the follow. Good time shot, good body shot there by Valtierra as well. And Valtierra has also a fan friendly style. Working the work. So this should be a good matchup back and forth. Yeah, both of you guys aren't going to really go a lot of places. They're going to be in front of each other. Now you see Bravo the tennis southpaw. And yeah, they're going to position themselves in front of each other and look to land their shots and to set them up. A smirk from Bravo. Let's see if Altiera sees that he turns south. Also, Altiera's trying to go in a clockwise position. He was put on the outside. And they get tangled up. Now Altiera smart smirk. Yep. Halfway through the first round, still trying to build each other out here. And Valtiera, yesterday at the hotel, so I'm walking around today in his hands wrap. You just have that calmness about the quality of, I don't care that everybody in here in Puerto Rico can come next to me, and nobody's with me except my team. He's very, very confident. Those guys will be very dangerous. Yeah, and, and, and you can see Bravo trying to un undo him a little bit in different ways, trying to be rough with him, pushing his head down a little bit, trying to throw big shots constantly, maybe trying to, you know, get, get him, get him a little, a little anxious in front of a tough crowd, but Altiera seems calm. Of Santori for both guys now. It's, it's getting a bit rough. They both study each other. They know what they're going to expect tonight. They know what they're going to get. Now the big shot's coming. All right, that's what we wanted. One big shot deserves another. Very nice right hand there by Valtiera and a return fire. Landed well as well by uh, Bravo. 
Probably yeah, some swing and a miss, huh? That's what I feel like around Bravo, because everything hard even in the first round. Final seconds of the opening round. Our main event in Orlando, Mexico, Puerto Rico. Both fighters jump off of their stool, ready to go, second round. Nestor Bravo, you're 29 years old. Puerto Rican, feel like you should be on the same level we talked about, like Amanda Serrano, Berlanda, Zayas. But he hasn't gotten that exposure. He hasn't been moved as fast as he would like the last couple of years. We say now he's in the right hand, the right management, the right promoter. And you have the right record. Absolutely. One, one good performance away from top end to a good fight. And in the super lightweight division, there's a lot of big names, so there's a lot of options there, you know? 140 pounders. And yeah, one 140 pounders that have been there, like, like we just pro -gray and Josh Taylor. And then you've also got the new the new guys who came up from lightweight, like Tofima Lopez and even uh, I'm sure Devin Haney's gonna be up there soon. Yep. So there's, there's a lot of, <laughs> not all the guys in between that are still there, you know, guys like Montana Love, who, yeah. who probably is gonna be looking for a comeback win after uh, taking the L, you know, things like that. There's, there's, there's levels of all types, 140 pounds, of all kinds of TV fighters there. And Ryan Garcia, who said he may have maybe one or two at max at 35, he's actually gonna fight Tank Davis at 36, he said 140 for him soon. Yeah, and then, you know, Ryan has also been at 135 because he's younger, of course, and a guy like that is also gonna fill in. It'll be a man for a body shot there by Valdez. And I'll go, uh, Jose Ramirez. Ramirez, yeah, can't forget him as well, yeah. Very good fighter. So the 140 pounder, so if you're a fighter with like Nestor Bravo who wins tonight and you move on and you get into the rank, a glossy record and you know, and he might, you know, he throws big shots, yeah. you know, he's, he's a guy who he, he'd be getting impressed tonight, he can walk into one of those shots. Yeah. Those fights. You get into the top 10, a champion can pick you. You never know what can happen, as long as you get in the ring, that's what he wants to do, but he said he, he wants to move on. Ken interview with Jake Rodriguez in you know, Fights.com, and he was saying how he feels like he's on that brink of 2023 could be for him. Uh, not in a cocky way, it was a confidence way. But he's been tough tonight against Valtierra. Yeah, Valtierra is savvy himself, you know. And really, he's done a good job of not being affected by the tough crowd and, and even the roughhouse tactics of, of, of Bravo. So the change there is Valtierra goes to the body, but nice counter up with that by Bravo. These two are looking at each other, okay, this looks familiar, they're in the mirror right now. Yeah, and you know, it's, Bravo does that a lot, where, where Valtierra will lean down, try to get low, and then Bravo will push him down. Yep. And, and he's trying to affect the leg, trying to, you know, mind games of course, but also trying to wear out the legs of Valtierra by doing that. This has happened a few times already. Double two! Claudia Trejos, uh, excellent analyst and reporter, is standing by with Amari Piedra. Thank you, Beto. Yes, indeed, Amari. You said Elijah Flores comes back in May. Boxing in South Florida is getting bigger by the minute, and it's all here at Carib Royale. What else can we expect here at this resort? Well, I'm going to correct you because boxing is getting bigger and bigger in Central Florida. So it's a great setup, great venue. We love being here. And Polly, most importantly, the fights are so good. Good food at the Venetian Steakhouse. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you guys, the Steakhouse, baby. Good, good food here. We have good fights tonight as well. Great service. It's uh, they treat you right here. And you guys saw the pool out there, you know, oh, yeah. a little waterfall there, catch some sun. It's a good destination area for fights and vacation. Get from New York and love the pool down here this time of year. Well, of course, yeah. there are no pools in New York this time of year. Unless you got an indoor one. Oh, All right now, so we got to get scrapped. They both know that the right hands are being loaded up. With. Well, you know what it is? They're both almost at that mid-range, but then when they both decide to fire, they're, they're not exactly feeling it out either. You know, yeah. there, there's not a lot of setup. We'll talk about setup punches in the Elijah Flores fight and we need for us to see them. There's not a lot of setup punches here either. They're at mid-range, which is the range you like to see them at, but then they're both firing hurtful shots. So 
it's hard to get them to land cleanly. It's, it's nice to see our shots firing, but when they're not being set up and both guys are expecting heavy shots, it's hard to make them land. Well, both guys are capable defensively. Bravo in white, 21 and 0, 15 KOs. Montierra in his pro career, 16 victories, 8 stoppages. disguising their, their big shots, you know, that's what you want to also do. It's okay to throw the big shots, people love that, it makes you exciting, but it, it, it's even better when you're able to land them, and the way you're able to land them is setting those traps and disguising them a little bit, and that's probably what these guys would, would want to be working on a little bit. Because now Bravo goes back to the south press hands. And back to right hands, now they're just over. Give it a different wrinkle. Less than a minute to go in the third round. Schedule with 10, our main event. Yeah, it's a mid-range right here. Good jab there by Batiera, but again, no change of look. Maybe some things or something. Anything that Bravo does, this crowd is just gonna chew. It should be his crowd, he sold it out here. And the referee's gonna have to separate him. Get tangled up, it'll be on the back. Yeah, but even if you don't count those punches, they do hurt. Oh, yeah. you know what? It's a nice move there by Valtiero, too. He wasn't throwing no. illegally. He got, he, he was behind uh, Bravo. They got tangled up, but it, he was coming from the front with the hooks. Oh, nice shots there, both again. Big shots. I see more mice. and Claudia Trejos here in Central Florida, as Amali reminded you. Yeah. You're, you're representing Miami Club. Yeah. It's all Florida. <laughs> it's a good crowd. Good action here. You know, I like what Guillermo Enriquez has done with uh, Valtierra. Um, they met each other about six years ago when Valtierra actually defeated uh, Soriano. And uh, they started working only six months ago, and he says that he has added a lot of those different looks and changes and angles to his boxing. There you see, like the other is stepping up, and he's a hard shot, and he's a hook, and a jab. No problem. I hear corner telling me I get a team will be aggressive. Yeah, I would say Valtiera is probably the more technical of the two fighters. But, uh, like the fighters that came in the last round were Malicia and for Malicia. And that comes with time. And now they're both getting dirty, hitting below the belt, referees letting them go, and work out of it. Hey! And Tori got tired of breaking them off. Yeah. You know, they didn't call kind of mix-ups and high-ups. Like, you know what, guys? Like, if you guys want to punch each other, Tim. That left hook right into his ribs. And then Bravo is getting his talking to, and Valtero's the one who landed the shot. You're right, Claudia. It the right might not side. count, but it lands. Yeah, it lands, and it does damage. It takes away. That's when your elbows start coming down. Yeah. If Valtero, you know, I'm not mad at him because he's gonna make it ugly being here. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's on oh, the wow. That's a major headbutt. That's a major headbutt. Is he gonna count it? Uh, okay, that's a slip. It's a big flash of heads, but he went down from a flash of heads. Yeah, might be. Oh, there's, there's a cut. There's a cut. Yeah, he's playing. There's, there's a cut on the right eye. I mean, that was a major flash of heads. That's the time. 
it was almost bound to happen. They were both flying in so crazily. So it was a flash ahead and he went down. If there was a punch thrown, but there was also a clash, and that's why I was hesitant yeah. to say what happened, because he looked yeah. at the time paper. But the punch was so wide, yes. it went around the way that the punch, as usual, has been happening a lot tonight, going around the side. And yeah, let's look at the replay here. Oh, yeah, it was the headbutt. And that caused a knock, like a knockdown from a headbutt. I mean, that, that caused, that's literally what caused him to go down. It wasn't a slip, it was literally a headbutt. But you did see a punch landed, a, a wide right landed, but it was the headbutt that pushed yeah. him down. Yeah, yeah, Because he actually was moving into it. I see. Yeah. But you know what it is? The, the fact that he took the right might have moved Bravo into, into that it. headbutt. So that double impact is also uh, a little bit risky. Like I said, we, if you're about to you, you came with that attitude of like, okay, we got to mix it up, make it ugly, but not that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I don't even know. It wasn't intentional. Yeah, because both of these guys are flying at different points. Different points, so it's also Bravo flying with it. Yeah. So it's like, coming at different points. But you know what, you, you invite a Mexican to that kind of fight. You know, they, they'll, they'll take your invitation, no, no problem. It's on the right eye, and there you see the cut. It's small, but it's deep. I just got a chance to be at the right corner. It was a major play. It's deep. And now they're talking, and you know, the big hand. Respect between the two. Yeah, and then and the fans are going crazy. Because don't, don't talk to them. There's something but it going was... on in the corral, because the referee is now talking that they might, it's, a, it's, a, not a, it's not a great area. I mean, it's, it's a little bit off to the side, but it's not in a great area. I mean, no. I mean, it could also affect it, man. And the it's fight has been cut. stopped. That's the problem. It's deep. Yeah, yeah. Right. wait, wait, the fight's been stopped. Yeah. Yes. It's something, it, 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 could, it could also affect him. So, well, it costs you rounds because you don't see. You, you don't see. I mean? so, so it was, it did not go four rounds. No contest. Right, it's a movie in and now Bravo is trying to explain to his fans behind us what's going on. Claudia Trejos is in the ring. We'll get an explanation. That sucks. Because that was yeah. building up to be a really good Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it was certainly a, a bad blood was building up into yes. the fight. You know, the both guys were getting on each other's nerves for a little bit. And there was some roughhouse tactics. But you could also almost see that coming, too, because there was so much roughhouse tactics going on. It's not an, It was not an easy fight to ref for Frank Santori. No, no. I thought he did a good job. I thought he tried he to let them, you know, work out of the clenches in uh, plenty of those and they didn't get involved, involved in the action, but it was almost like the, the, the styles themselves clashed and eventually sorted the heads. Yeah, Bravo standing right above us. You can see the cut. It's, it's, it's a good one. But he came over and talked with Valtierra, and there was no animosity, no bad blood between the two. They actually touched gloves. Yeah, because I'm sure that they, they, he caused a couple of head clashes. They caused a couple yeah. of head clashes, and eventually one of them ended the fight. We'll come back with the decision and all the results here in Orlando. Get the final particulars and find out what the heck is going on inside the ring. Back to Orlando, a fight that ends midway through the third. Still trying to figure out what's going on for more on the official decision and what's happening in the ring. Let's go to Claudia Trejos. Thank you, Beto. There's still a little bit of confusion here, but what happened was the doctor looked at the cut. It's steep. And he asked Nestor if he could see, and he said, well, uh, I'm having a hard time seeing. So he decided to stop the action. Once the uh, fighter says he can't see, the action must be stopped. So the ref came into the center of the ring and stopped the actions. Later on, we're going to have a chance to talk to both fighters and get their impressions and see exactly how they felt during this third round. All right, excellent job, Claudia. Thank you so much. Let's go to ring announcer Mark Frado. Ladies and gentlemen, based on information provided by the doctor at ringside, the referee in charge, Frank Centuri Jr. calls for a halt to this contest. Your official time, 1.55 in round number four. Because the fourth round was not completed, the final result of this bout is a no contest. Because it was not four rounds, the fight has been declared a no contest. Thank you, Mark Prado. Uh, Nestor Bravo, his crowd making noise for him. And he and Valterra were it was teaming up to be a good one. It was back and forth action. And there you see the judges and referees all together. Now let's go back to the ring. Claudia Trejos will be interviewing the fighters. Thank you, Beto. Nestor, you have the crowd going. Always the support. We talked about the support of the Puerto Rican fans. Can you walk me through what happened? Well, to be honest, I felt like I was dominating him. I was a little bit out of distance, out of shape. Um, I didn't know he was dirty like that. He hit me a lot in the kidneys, hit me a lot in the button and then the legs. I'm not a dirty fighter. 
<laughs> but what happened? Uh, you you went back to the, to the to the corner. The doctor checked yes, you out. I automatically, when I felt it, I knew it was a headbutt. I said, "Oh shit, he cut me." That's what I said. I said, "It cut me." And then this eye, I was just seeing blood. This one, I see good. But hey, it is what it is. I'm blessed. I got nothing but respect for him. Now I'm a, I'm an athlete. I'm a, I'm a great guy. But I ain't scared of nobody. <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna have you back. We're gonna have you back. Back to you, Beto. Um, we'll come back with more. In Orlando on CBS Sports.